The season of Lent begins next Wednesday uh, with this beautiful day of, of Ash Wednesday. Uh, the season of Lent is, is marked by uh, the cross of Christ, his passion, his suffering and death for you. It's a joyful, uh, even if it's a quiet season, it's a joyful season as we see the, the depth of his love for you, that he's willing to endure this, that he is willing to take up the cross, empty himself in love for you. Uh, the cross and that amazing love of Jesus marks the season of Lent. That's the chief mark of it. But there are uh, some other marks uh, of the season of Lent, some things that are you somewhat unique to it. Uh, catechesis is something that marks the, the season of Lent. Now, if cat to echo is the word that catechesis comes for, and it's, you hear in there that an, an echo. It's a, it's a passing on, a repeating, a, a handing over uh, of the Christian faith. It's, it's a way of instructing in the Christian faith. The season of Lent has that emphasis of instruction. We certainly instruct uh, the, the Christian faith. We teach it throughout the year, but uh, Lent has a particular focus. Uh, in, the, in the early Christian church, uh, those who were converts to Christianity most often were baptized at the Easter Vigil. So Saturday night, as the sun goes down, before Saturday before Easter, as the sun goes down, the great Easter vigil would begin. Uh, and at that is, uh, service, which sometimes could, could last a very long time, those who were converts to the Christian faith, who had been instructed in the Christian faith for, in some cases, years uh, leading up to that point, and they would be baptized. Uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They would come to the Lord's table and receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus uh, at the altar for the first time. Uh, and, and since that was a kind of a, a pinnacle there, as we get this great celebration of Jesus' victory over death begins at sundown uh, on Saturday uh, evening, uh, and they were brought into uh, the, the life of the church, baptism and the Holy Supper for the first time at the vigil, that, that season of Lent, those weeks coming right before that, were a, a time of uh, a very detailed instruction uh, and preparation for that. So Lent often has had this, this catechetical uh, or instruction uh, uh, focus uh, to it. Um, in our congregation this year, we're having a focus on, on instruction. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we need to be, uh, be clear on, especially as, let's say, as parents, but really anyone, you are going to say something about the Christian faith. Especially as parents, you are going to teach the faith to your children. It's not a matter of if you're going to do it. Uh, it's more a question of, of how. Uh, are, are you going to have some kind of plan? Is it going to be purposeful? Is it going to be thought out? Or, or will you say nothing about it? And by saying nothing about it, and you show that it's kind of a nothing for you, and it's fine for it to be a nothing for your kids. Um, now you're always going to be saying something about God. Uh, we can say that everything is, is theology. So theology is words about God. And if God has made everything, if he's the maker of all things visible and invisible, then everything that we say is at least indirectly it's at least indirectly theology. It's saying something about God. We're always going to be saying something about him. Uh, and, and if as parents in the Christian household, it's our, one of our callings to teach the faith, then we, we need to come to terms with this, this idea that it's not, it's not a matter of if you're going to teach but how. Um, what I'd like to do, at least going through this season of, of Lent, is uh, talk about the how 
you know, how does this look in the Christian house? Uh, whether there are, you know, children who are uh, under the age of 18 who still live there uh, or not, uh, or even if uh, you live on your own, um, to think through how uh, the instruction of the Christian faith continues happening outside of a Sunday morning, outside of, of church service, uh, outside of a Bible class or Sunday school, how does this happen in the Christian home? Um, in the back of our uh, you know, service folders that we use here on, uh, at our church, uh, we've been having uh, some uh, little things that can help out with that. And I have a new uh, title for it going into this coming Sunday. Kitchen, kitchen Table Catechesis is what we're, we're going to call it. Uh, because a, a, good, uh, a good spot for teaching Christian faith, I think, uh, is at the kitchen table. Uh, when we fill our bellies, it's a good time to fill our souls. When we eat bread, it's a good time to think about the bread of life. When we drink water, it's a good time to think about rivers of, of life that, that flow, as Jesus talks about. When we nourish ourselves physically, I think it's a good time to nourish ourselves spiritually. We do this and in, 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 it's the heart of the matter, it's the heart of the, the Christian life on, on Sunday morning uh, when we have word and meal together. Gather at the Lord's table. Uh, we receive spiritual food and the Holy Communion, the preaching of the word of God. Uh, I, I think that the kitchen table at home can be an extension, extension of the, the altar at church. That table that is the Lord's table. There he feeds us, and as we uh, are, are go out into the world and make our way into our homes, uh, we can do a similar thing. So at, at the table at church, uh, it's all about for you, right? Uh, my body for you, my blood for you. The, the focus in the season of Lent about Jesus' passion, his suffering, his death, it's all about his love for you. And preaching at the church uh, and from the pulpit it should be have this 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 key thing uh, that it is for you. It's Jesus for you. Um, doing that also at home, you know, whether you're sitting by yourself with your food and, and you're enjoying your food and you have the Bible open, um, when you are searching the scriptures, be looking and hearing and tuned in to that for you of the scriptures, that for you of the, the good news of the cross of Christ. Uh, when you, you and maybe you, you spend a little extra time reading some of the Good Friday uh, accounts uh, during the season of Lent. Uh, as you're reading through all that he, he suffered, you can have this refrain kind of going on in the background for you, for you, for you, for me, for me, for me. All that he did is for me. And if you are gathered around a kitchen table with your family, make sure however you, you set up the, the, the purposeful uh, teaching instruction of the Christian faith to those who are uh, in your household, make sure it has this, this flavor uh, of the for you. For you. So that this is not law-based burdensome, you need to behave better, um, which, you know, dads especially, uh, and with their, their children, you need to talk about their behavior. Um, but more than anything else, and covering their misbehavior needs to be this Jesus for you stuff. So the, uh, the resources we have that we'll, we'll be making use of uh, at our church um, we'll, we'll try to be uh, helpful in that, you know, and I'd like, uh, you know, once a, a week, at least through the season of Lent, to have a video like this and to talk about some of the broader practical matters about how do you teach the faith to your household. Um, this is especially important for, for dads, um, the impact that dad has uh, uh, on his family's faith uh, is huge. 
And at the, the very center of everything is the Father's heart. And God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father loves us, and so he made us. The Father loves us, and so he sent the Son. The Father loves us, and so he has breathed out the Holy Spirit through the Son uh, in the, the means of grace to bring us to faith in the Son so that we can call him Father. At the, at the very heart of all things uh, is the, the Father's love. And, and when our earthly fathers don't care about the faith or don't speak about the faith or have no way of handing down the faith and catechizing us in the faith, uh, then, then there's something huge that's missing. Um, and so dads, especially, you know, I want to instruct you and help you and encourage you in, uh, in how you hand over the faith because it's not a matter of if you're going to do it. Uh, but how you're going to do it. So about once a week, you know, at least through this season of Lent, I want to have uh, these videos to talk about some broad practical matters about the how, but then also to walk through uh, some of the, the details that we have coming up for the next week. Um, so I'd like to do that uh, now. The, for, for next week, the part of the catechism that we want to focus on uh, is the address of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father Who Art in Heaven. In the small catechism, we read, With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children, so that we may pray to him as boldly and confidently as dear children ask their dear father. So with your household uh, this, this coming week, you know, starting Sunday and going all throughout the week, uh, one of the things that we want to focus on uh, is this... Uh, this welcome invitation to pray to God as boldly and confidently as dear children do that. The, the, the gospel reading is about uh, a, a man who uh, cried out to Jesus. Uh, he knew that the Son of Man was coming. Uh, he was a blind man, and he cries out, Lord, have mercy. Uh, and so throughout the week, you can, uh, uh, especially, I, I would suggest, you know, uh, breakfast, uh, dinner, uh, times when you can sit down at the table with the family and fighting for that time, making sure that you can do that, uh, and then talking about the, the Christian faith. Uh, and uh, especially if you have uh, little children, uh, to just read like that part of the catechism, you know, the address of the Lord's Prayer, and what does that mean? Uh, if that is echoed all throughout the week, uh, it starts to sink in. It starts to create questions in them. You know, what does it mean? Uh, those are good, helpful Lutheran questions to be asking. Um, the way we do it uh, at our house uh, is uh, inconsistently, uh, and that's uh, my problem, my fault. Um, but we, what we try to do when we're, we're doing it well, and when I'm remembering to, to stay on top of it, is that we'll use uh, the we use the Treasury of da Daily Prayer, which is a, an excellent resource that came out uh, more than ten years ago now, uh, and it has uh, matins, uh, which is a morning prayer service, uh, and so during uh, breakfast while the boys are sitting down, uh, my wife and I will we will chant uh, these parts of the the service. We'll do some singing, uh, and that will. Uh, make an impression, I hope, uh, on our kids that this is an important thing. Uh, this is a joyful thing. This is something you sing about. Um, and then when we get to, uh, th through the, the readings for, from Scripture, uh, when, I'm, when I'm doing my job well, uh, I'll just read uh, the, the part of the catechism uh, so that hopefully by the end of the week, they've heard that part of the catechism about 10 times and they've probably got it memorized already. Um, and then we'll also talk about it a little bit. But then, uh, so that we'll have that part of the catechism. We also have a, a, a quote from the large catechism, uh, which we don't use a whole lot with uh, our kids. Sometimes I'll read it um, and say something about it. But this could uh, be a you know, good thing to a devotional thought uh, for you as adults uh, or for older kids. Uh, to uh, bring up something like this that's a little more, more deep. Um, so the quote from the large catechism for next week when we're thinking about prayer. 
uh, and this wonderful invitation that we have, that we can be like the blind beggar on the side of the road who boldly cried out, Lord, have mercy to the son of David. We can do that with God. Um, the quote from the large catechism for next week to, to chew on is, is this, for whenever a godly Christian prays, dear father, let your will be done, God speaks from on high and says, yes, dear child, it shall be so in spite of the devil and all the world. Um, and this is a quote from the large catechism that I think I will use uh, with, with our boys uh, next week. Our, our oldest is not even 10 yet. Uh, and uh, he can, this is right at his level. This is right at our four-year-old's level. Uh, we can talk a lot from that, uh, that there's, there's reasons that we might think uh, that God won't hear our prayers uh, or that he doesn't hear our prayers uh, or uh, that he's uh, answering in a way that is somehow against us. And so uh, Luther says here, you know, in spite of the devil and the world, uh, the, the thoughts about the world and the things that the devil wants to say might make us think that God doesn't hear, uh, that he doesn't care, or that he's somehow against us. Uh, and so we could talk with the kids, you know, uh, about that. You know, sometimes it feels like he's not listening. Um, but you can be sure uh, that when you pray, uh, dear father, let your will be done, God says, yes, dear child, it shall be so. Yes, it shall be so. Um, and that can bring up, it brings up your own follow-up questions. You know, how do we know? I can ask my boys, how do we know that God is going to hear our prayers? And that gets back to the, you know, the focus of Lent. Uh, it's this for you. Jesus died for you. He suffered for you so that you can be God's child. So you can call on the Father. So there's this opening uh, that is not something that depends on you being good and you ticking all of the boxes. Instead, because Jesus died for you, because you're baptized into Christ, you are God's own child. And so he hears your prayer um, because Jesus died for you. And that's what I uh, plan on emphasizing with, with my boys uh, next week that for you uh, of what Jesus has done that allows us to call on God as our dear Father in heaven. Um, and I hope that with these, uh, if, if nothing else from these videos, uh, this will be a good preparation for me uh, so that I'm not just going through the motions with, uh, with my family next week. Uh, when we're uh, going through all of this, uh, but I've, I've done some preparation. I hope this uh, provides some preparation for you too. Now, the uh, next thing on there is uh, there's readings, and these readings are uh, found in the front of our hymnal, and they're also the suggested readings from the, the Treasury of Daily Prayer. Um, but then after that, I have a, a question uh, that has to do with that part of the the, the faith that we're teaching in the catechism, uh, and then uh, just one verse or two uh, that has to do with, with that question. So the first question for Sunday is, what privilege does God give us in Christ? And the uh, passage is from the Sermon on the Mount. So Matthew chapters 5, 6, 7, uh, this is where we find the, the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and so to answer this question, what privilege does God give us in Christ? Uh, I want to look at Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. Uh, so when we're sitting down, uh, and typically I've been doing these ones uh, sometimes in the morning, I'm trying to figure out if it'll be better in our family to do it in the evening instead. Um, we're figuring it out and trying to uh, do this uh, better and better, and Lent is a good time to try and improve uh, your know, time in God's Word as a family. Uh, and I hope, uh, I hope you put some effort into that this this uh, Lent. Um, it, the, the benefit the benefit of it <laughs> um, is going to be worth it. Um, but we might be, uh, you know, at dinner time. Uh, I might ask this question: What privilege does God give us in Christ? And then I'll read from Matthew seven verses seven and eight. Jesus said. 
Keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. So I'll read the que question, read the passage, and then I'll usually read the question again. So what privilege does God give us in Christ? The answer would be that we can ask, we can seek, we can knock. Um, and they may not get that right away because they might be having a food fight or who knows what's going on. Um, I'm not worried about this being like a, a, a classroom setting. Uh, I want this to be kind of natural and comfortable with them. Uh, but uh, if they're not sure about it, I'll probably read the, the question again and try to lead them along and seeing uh, what a privilege it is. Uh, that we get we get to ask God for stuff, and I might follow up with a question. And as you're talking, you might come up with questions uh, on your own. Um, I might follow up. Well, what what might you ask for? What would you want to ask for God for today? Um, and try to get them talking and let them talk. And uh, as little kids, they're going to be asking questions. Uh, sometimes it'll be on topic. Um, usually it's not on topic, but it's us talking together. And I want to set up the kitchen table as this place where we not only have good food, uh, but we are talking together and bringing in the, the Christian faith with it. Now, the question for Monday is, what is prayer? Uh, the passage that I have, there's so many different passages we could go to, uh, but the passage I have uh, suggested there is from Acts uh, chapter 7, verses 59 and 60. So as the, the kids are, you know, stuffing their face with food and uh, talking on Monday evening, I'll, I'll ask this question, what is prayer? And then uh, read this uh, passage from Acts chapter 7. Uh, and with this one, what I might do uh, is ask what is prayer and not read the passage right away because they're familiar with what prayer is and let them uh, talk about it a little bit and then and then say, well, here's here's a, a prayer uh, that we hear uh, in the moment uh, uh, of a very critical moment of the life of Stephen. So while they were stoning Stephen, so while he's dying, rocks are coming at him and they're hitting him so that he's going to die. While they were stoning Stephen, Stephen called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. After he said this, he fell asleep. So then I might ask, so what is prayer? Um, Prayers talking with God, asking him for things. Uh, we're talking to Jesus here. It's one of those uh, uh, points that shows that Jesus is God. Uh, you know, he's hearing this prayer. Um, but what is he praying for? Well, he's praying for his enemies. What a remarkable thing that can only come from this love of God in Jesus Christ on the cross. You know, focusing in Lent on his suffering and death for you. And that flows also into love for the neighbor, for the enemy, for the ones who are killing him. He's praying for them that they would be forgiven. A remarkable thing. What a, what a privilege we have in prayer. So on Tuesday, uh, the question is, to whom should we pray? Uh, and the uh, verses from 1 John 5 uh, and I got a typo in our bulletin, I see, but uh, it's verses 20 and 21, so the very end of uh, John's first letter. Uh, and so if, if we've gotten to Tuesday and on Monday we talked about Stephen and we hear about his prayer uh, while asking this question, to whom should we pray? They might, my boys will probably be quick to say, well, we pray to God. Um, but start to make them try to think about, uh, you know, what other options people come up with. You know, we pray to angels, we pray to our family members who have died and gone before us. Um, and then uh, get them thinking about that a little bit. And then read uh, from 1 John. Uh, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is True, the true God and eternal life. Dear children, guard yourselves from idols. Um, so 
idol would be anything, anyone that we would treat as God uh, who's not God. Um, but here John says that Jesus Christ is the true God. So just like yesterday, Stephen prayed to Jesus. He's praying to God. Uh, whom do we pray to? We pray to God and to God alone. We pray to Jesus. We pray to God. And we pray to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We are praying to the one true God. Now, on Wednesday, we'll continue talking about uh, prayer. So the, the plan for this next week, talk at uh, first few days about prayer in general. Uh, then on Wednesday, to start talking about the uh, address of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, to uh, look at some of the details of that. Uh, and we, we pray the Lord's Prayer all the time uh, at home. Uh, we pray it all the time at church. Uh, and... Uh, it's an easy prayer to be so familiar with that we don't think about it at all. So it's good from time to time for, for uh, us as adults uh, and for our children uh, to unpack some of the details, some of the words of it. So on Wednesday, uh, the, the plan is to ask this question, you know, uh, what is encouraging about the word Father? When we pray, we say our Father. So what's encouraging about that? And in 1 John 3, verse 1, we see this. See the kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The world does not know us because it did not know him. So what's encouraging about the word Father? Well, it's love. So I'll probably have to reread the, the first few, uh, handful or so of words uh, of that, and so ask the question, read the passage, uh, ask the question again, and then say, now listen, listen for a, an important word. And I might even say, well, it's a four-letter word. It's just a little word, a four-letter word, a really important one. See the kind of love the Father has given. Love. You know, what's encouraging about the word Father? It's a love relationship there. Um, he, it's not... Uh, see the kind of paycheck the boss has given us. That would be tough. That would depend on us. But the Father loves us. Uh, he's not a, a, our boss. Uh, he's our Father. Uh, and he loves us. And he doesn't treat us uh, based off of how we're behaving. Uh, he treats us based off of his love for us in Jesus. Uh, and that big focus that we have in Lent is for you, for you. Now, Thursday uh, takes a look at the first word uh, of the Lord's Prayer, the hour. So in the Our Father, uh, we pray Our Father. What does the word hour remind us of? Uh, so we've gotten, the, the nice thing about this is each of these questions, you know, as I'm walking through this right now, this is a long video and it takes a while. But each of these questions doesn't take much time at all uh, when you're doing them by themselves uh, day after day. And to do that just a little bit each day, uh, it's like making sure that your house plants have just, just enough water, just enough water uh, to thrive. Um, you're getting a little bit consistently, uh, you know, instead of trying to take up all of the feeding of your faith on a Sunday morning, and just relying uh, on that and then thinking nothing about it for the rest of the week, a little bit day after day, um, especially for your children. Uh, if, if this is happening every day, and it, even if it's just a few minutes uh, that it lasts, um, that makes an impression. You know, this is important. This is an everyday thing. Uh, and this is a joyful thing, too. You know, you know I don't want it to be um, this is math class, uh, and they hate math, uh, and there's pressure or anything like that. This is what we talk about. This is what we like to talk about. And if, if your kids are so young that they're not, uh, you know, uh, at a point where they're answering any of these questions, if, if they're at the table and mom and dad are talking about it, and there's something like a Bible, the Treasury of Daily Prayer, the hymnal open, they're used to that. They become familiar with that. They know mom and dad are talking about this thing. Um, and, and that sinks in for them. 
So uh, w when we get to, uh, what is it, Thursday next week, uh, Galatians 3, 26 and 27, uh, the question is, uh, what uh, does the word our remind us of? So we say, our Father who art in heaven, what does the word our remind us of? Uh, Galatians 3, uh, verses 26 and 27. In fact, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Indeed, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. So what does the word our remind us of? Um, well, because of baptism, we're part of this family uh, with everyone else who has been baptized. It's not my father who art in heaven. That would be accurate. It's true, my father. But we're taught to pray our father. Our Father who art in heaven. So as many of you as were baptized. So you are brothers and sisters uh, with everyone else who's been baptized into Christ. What a wonderful thing to have our family uh, together underneath our Father. Um, we're, we're tempted to think that the, uh, especially in, uh, in America, I think, tempted to think that my faith is my faith and it's just this personal thing between me and, and God. Um, but that robs us of such uh, joy uh, and help, uh, support uh, that we could get from the rest of the family of God. It's not my faith. Um, it's never just me and Jesus or just me and the Father. Um, we're taught to pray our Father. And as many of you as we're baptized into Christ, have been clothed with Christ. Um, and so there's such a gift that God has given us in the whole family of God. And I want, I want our boys to recognize that. Um, and I want to recognize that because I'm tempted to, uh, to not rely <laughs> on the people God has given me around me. Uh, Friday... Uh, the question uh, moves, so we want to focus on our Father who art in heaven. Uh, we want to focus on the who art in heaven part. Uh, and for that, we're going to go to the Psalms. So Psalm 124, uh, verse 8. Uh, we're going to uh, look at that verse on Friday. On Friday, sometimes we don't end up doing uh, devotion because it's the end of the week and it's chaos. And um, I'm not always a... a, a on top of my game uh, and making sure that we're doing this important thing and then give in to laziness or whatever it is. Um, but hopefully, God willing, I won't uh, give in to that next Friday. Uh, and next Friday, uh, we'll uh, ask the boys, uh, what do the words who art in heaven say about our Father? So what do the words who art in heaven say about our Father? Uh, in Psalm 124, we uh, sing, we pray, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So what does it say uh, about our Father? So we might say, well, it, it means that he's in heaven, but there's a lot of others who are in heaven, what we could say. Um, more than that, he's also the maker of heaven and earth. Uh, he's a particular one in heaven. Uh, and if he's the maker of heaven and earth, then when we're praying to our Father who art in heaven, we're praying to one who's at the top. Uh, one who made it all, uh, one that uh, can do uh, so many remarkable things for us. Now, Saturday is the, the final part of this weekly catechesis uh, for, for the week. And uh, again, it, it, it's not much that needs to happen day after day. Um, but the, the little bit uh, can produce a huge amount of uh, fruits of faith uh, over time. Um, I would encourage you uh, to not put too much pressure on yourself um, in catechizing your household and teaching the faith and passing it on, um, but just do something that's consistent. Uh, whether you're following this order and using these questions or not, just do something that gets the Word of God in their ears and in their hearts in a consistent way and that has this focus of the, this being for you, that they are loved. Jesus loves you, for you, for you, for you. Um, Saturday, uh, we're gonna go to this comforting chapter of Romans chapter eight uh, and uh, take a look at 
uh, what uh, we can think about with prayer uh, and the address of the Lord's Prayer. So why does the Father hear our prayers? We'll go to Romans chapter 8 and look at verses 15 and 16. Um, why does the Father hear our prayers? And I might ask that question and say, uh, you know, what do you think before reading the, the verses? Um, does he hear our prayers because we've been good, because we try hard, anything like that? All of these things that we, we want to go to. We want to go to um, making our relationship with the Father into something that we earn. If it's about us, about something that we do, we do good, he gives us good. Um, but that's, that's a sinking sand. <laughs> it's not a great foundation. Um, but it's where we, we, what we think sometimes. So I might ask that question, let them think about it a little bit, and then read, well, here's what uh, Paul says in Romans 8. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, so that you are afraid again, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we call out Abba, Father. The Spirit himself joins our spirit in testifying that we are God's children. Uh, we are God's children. We have the spirit of adoption, uh, and that happened in baptism. I want to bring back that passage earlier in the week from Galatians uh, chapter 3. You are. You've been baptized uh, into Christ. And so you are sons of the Heavenly Father. And so he hears your prayer because he has adopted you. He has brought you into his family through Christ who died for you uh, and with whom you're united in holy baptism. Um, in, in that way, you know, if I, I pray to... Uh, if, for my kids, for myself, for my wife, and for your household, uh, that in uh, setting up this kitchen table catechesis, uh, that throughout the week you kind of build their confidence uh, on uh, God's love for them, God's love for you in Christ, uh, in his death, uh, and your baptism uh, into him so that you are adopted as uh, children of the Heavenly Father and that now you can be bold to pray uh, to him as, as boldly and confidently as dear children. And so reading that part of the catechism all throughout the week and letting that kind of marinate throughout the week uh, hopefully will bring up questions uh, in your own mind, your own heart, and continue searching the scriptures and for your family as well. Um, but that's the, the plan that I have for, for our household, for our kitchen table catechesis uh, next week. Uh, I pray that, uh, that, that you get to do something like that, uh, something that spends time in God's word. Uh, and I pray that this video is somewhat helpful uh, in helping you, especially if you're a father, to prepare and to teach the faith uh, with some purpose uh, and with a plan in mind. Uh, because it, it, it is not a matter of if you're going to teach the faith. Next week, you are going to teach the faith. Uh, it's a question of how is it going to happen. Uh, will you say nothing about it, and in that way, say that the faith is a nothing thing for our house? Or will you have some kind of a plan uh, that, that gets to this for you, uh, about the, the love of God in Christ Jesus for you? I pray that this has been helpful and uh, hope to, to do uh, one of these videos every week for, for a little bit here to uh, uh, encourage you uh, in this wonderful work uh, of teaching the faith at home. God be with you this week.